Hi, I'm Matt Dickin, and this is Strategic Wealth. Here's what's coming up on today's show. I think it certainly can play an important role in one's uh, mindset and attitude about themselves and their place in the world. Sure. Maybe the only debt that would be okay in some cases is for you to have a mortgage. That's just a little bit of what you're going to see right now. Hello and thank you for watching once again. We've got a lot of great information we're going to bring to you this week, but before we get into it, I want to thank everybody who came out to the WHAS 11 Health and Fitness Expo. I really enjoyed meeting everybody. We were proud to be sponsors of the event, and while we were there, we had a chance to meet a lot of you, answer some of the questions that you have, and we're actually going to be taking a look at some of those in the weeks to come here on the show. And while we were out there, we had a chance to ask a few of you this week's Facebook question. Do you believe that financial fitness is part of one's overall health? Here's a few of the responses that we got. I think it certainly can play an important role in one's uh, mindset and attitude about themselves and their place in the world, sure. Absolutely. Well, because you have to plan for your future, for your family's future. Absolutely do. I think that you know if you have poor financial fitness, it affects you in your daily life, puts a lot of stress in your day and can, you know, stress breeds unhealthy habits in your life. And, you know, in most people's life, money and financial wealth is a big issue. So absolutely, I do believe so. I want to thank everybody once again for those great responses. I really enjoyed meeting those that were able to make it out to the expo and stop by our booth. And while you're on our Facebook page, please don't forget to like us. And you can also go to our Facebook page to sign up for our newsletter. We'll send it out to you either via email or in your mailbox. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's Smart Money Television. I had a couple of friends whose fathers both worked at the same company doing what I understood to be basically the same job. And when I would go to one of the houses, it seemed like they argued about money a lot. They were always fighting about money. If the car broke down, they really didn't have any money to pay to get it fixed. So the other friend was the complete opposite of that. They never talked about money. And I asked my parents, I said, what's, what's going on here? What's the difference? And they tell me, well, Matt, one family probably budgets and plans and saves, and then the other family just spends everything, so when an emergency comes up, there's no money left over. And I said, well, I've got an idea to help the family that doesn't budget, plan, and save. What I told them I was going to do was start a company, and when they get their paychecks, what they could actually do is send their checks to my company. I would pay all of their bills for them, put a little money in savings, and then I would pay them an allowance, because that's what I was used to getting. My parents looked at me and they said, well, Matt, you know, we don't really think anybody's going to turn their money over to uh, an 11 or a 12-year-old, but they said that what you're talking about sounds a lot like what a financial planner would do for someone. I made the decision that, okay, well, then that's what I want to do when I grow up. That's something that was instilled in me at a very early age. Most people were taught, you don't talk about your finances. You know, you don't, you don't do that. You don't talk about it. You should be able to take care of it on your own. It's okay to need help. Individuals are concerned, will their retirement nest egg last as long as they need it to? The economy is changing rapidly. Things are different today than what they were 15, 20, or 30 years ago. So you can't use the same strategy and think that they're going to work as well today. Our clients have worked so hard throughout the course of their lives to accumulate the assets that they do have. People have questions. They, they want answers. And there are so many different routes that you can go to. One of the things that we're really good at doing is solving the problem, repositioning their assets to where they will have guaranteed income for life, and putting them really in a much better position than what they were when we first met them. Numerous studies that have shown over the years that the vast majority of individuals, when they go into retirement, will actually go into retirement without having enough money to maintain their standard of living and make it to their life expectancy. You know, there are a lot of good advisors that are out there that will help you accumulate your retirement nest egg but you really need different strategies. Once you stop accumulating your nest egg and start distributing your nest egg to generate income. Matt's vision's always been quite simple. Security, protecting your assets, and getting a reasonable rate of return. It may sound like old hat because you've heard it so many times, but people need to hear it. They need to know that they have that sort of option. We want to move you from a maybe environment into a guaranteed environment because you do have a choice. 
What we've actually experienced in years where the stock market goes down in values, we have a lot of clients that call us and thank us because they don't have to worry about losing 10 or 15 or 20 percent of more of their retirement assets. You know, Mark, I meet with individuals all the time that are close or into retirement. They're just carrying way too much risk in their portfolio. I really enjoy being able to take someone that's just not really sure if they can retire yet or not, or maybe they're already retired and they're just not really sure if the money's going to last as long as they need it to. And I like being able to take them through our process and hopefully at the end be able to share with them and educate them and prove to them that they don't really have anything to worry about. There's no better way for us to continue to get our message out to our clients than to have them watch our show on TV. You, know, you can have your money in a safer position, but still see it grow at a reasonable return. Have them listen to the radio. Good morning, Kentuckiana, and welcome back to the Matt Dickens Show. Where we and to make them feel better about the decisions that they've made, because essentially we preach the same message over and over and over. I think it makes people more comfortable with walking in the door and knowing exactly who he is before they even meet him. Good afternoon, Strategic Wealth Designers. Marcy speaking. How may I direct your call? We have a really good team. Everybody is very cohesive. When the clients first walk into the office, they're really kind of taken back by our lobby. I think it really helps them feel at home. Those folks that come in here, they've lived life right. They're looking for an ethical person to handle their money. And I think once you get to know Matt and meet him, he's just like he is on the TV or the radio, very approachable, extremely smart. Personally, Matt is a lot of fun. He is always in an upbeat mood. So even if you are not in such a great mood, he can pull you out of that mood and make your day so much brighter and better. And really something that comes off, I think, immediately when you meet Matt is the passion that he has for the job, uh, for what he's doing. You know, he loves coming to work, he loves what he does, and really that rubs off on us. We all really put a lot of effort, a lot of energy into making sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. The main reason that Matt started doing this stuff is just simply to help people out, and that's absolutely the most satisfying aspect of the job is just to make sure that at the end of the day when people leave our office, they're in a better situation than when they came in. What we like to try and do is take the maybes out of the equation. The majority of our clients prefer to have guarantees and certainties that they won't run out of money before they run out of life. Let's protect your assets. Let's keep it simple. We help retirees and pre-retirees protect and preserve their retirement nest eggs so they can provide guaranteed income that will last them the rest of their lives. Enjoy an evening with best-selling author and TV talk show host Matt Dickin as he hosts his nationally recognized financial seminar in Kentuckiana. Discover what millions of safety-conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets. Can you find growth and security in today's volatile markets? Can you safeguard your hard-earned assets from the IRS? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and limited seating, we recommend that you call now. Operators are standing by 24-7, 502-653-6080. That's 502-653-6080 or go to askmattdickin.com. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's Smart Money Television. And now it's time for X's and O's with me, Coach Matt. Come on, let's go. Okay, today let's talk a little bit about the rule of 100. Of course, we've mentioned it in the past here on the uh, TV show. I talk about it a lot on the radio show. And over the last few weeks, we've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls into the office from individuals wanting to know more information and of course the rule of 100 basically says whatever your age is that's the percentage of your retirement assets that should be in a safer position then the difference between your age and the number 100 is the percentage of your portfolio that you could take risk with only if you're comfortable with taking risk with it it doesn't mean that you have to but that would be the maximum amount of money that you would want to put at risk now this really is not a new concept if you take a look at it Put putnam institute recently said that a retired individual should have no more than 25 percent of their retirement assets at risk in the market and that's really interesting because putnam of course is a mutual fund company aarp recently came out and said that no more than 40 percent should be at risk once once an individual retires uh, smart money magazine recently came out we posted an article on our facebook page that says 
no more than 25 percent should be at risk when you go into retirement. They said maybe even as low as 5 percent should be at risk once an individual retires. Uh, of course, there's other examples as well. So if we take a look at it, it's not a new concept, but to explain it again, basically if we have someone that's, let's say, 70 years old, so you take the number 100, you take their age, so 70 years old, that of course means that no more than 30% of their money should be at risk in the market. Uh, the other 70% should be completely safe. Now, of course, if you're 60 years old, then the ratio is 60-40. Now, whenever we start to talk about the rule of 100, you do not have to hit the percentage exactly. You just want to be within the ballpark. If you're maybe 5 or 10 percentage points one way or the other, that's fine. It's, it's no big deal, no reason to panic. But you want to be close to this as you move closer and in, into retirement. And let's go through an example as to why this is so important and why we share this with individuals. You know, I think if you had followed the rule of 100 over the last 10 years, you may have weathered the financial storm that we've had a little better than what you did. Uh, of course, we can't go back and fix that. That's all in the past. But what you can do is fix things moving forward. Because I don't think that the stock market's done being volatile. So I think if you follow the rule of 100 moving forward, it'll help you weather whatever financial crisis we might uh, see next. So if we walk through an example, let's say, and I'm going to use round numbers to try and keep it simple. Let's say that we have somebody that has a million dollars in their investments, okay, and they are retired at this point. Uh, they would want to draw some sort of an income on that million dollars, and let's say that they're getting 5%. Okay, so a million dollars obviously multiplied by 5%, they can hopefully live on interest or income. Obviously, that's going to come out to be $50,000 per year. Okay, so if this individual is retired, maybe they've got Social Security, maybe they've got uh, pension income, their investments are generating an additional $50,000, life is pretty good for them at that point. Now, let's take a look and see what happens if this individual has a million dollars, and let's say that it is 100% at risk in the market. Now, they might be trying to keep their money safe by diversifying. They might have a multitude of individual stocks or mutual funds, maybe some bonds, things like that. But let's say that we run into a situation like we had back in 2008, where we went through a financial crisis, went through a recession. Obviously, that drove our stock market down. And individuals lost, on average, about 40% uh, is, is on average what was lost. So let's say if we take the million dollars and we lose 40%, obviously that means we no longer have $1 million to generate income. We now only have $600,000. So again, if we now have a nest egg that went from $1 million to $600,000, and let's say that we are still able to generate uh, maybe interest of 5%, on $600,000, that means that the income now is only 30 grand. Okay, so that's a $20,000 reduction in what the individual is used to earning, uh, or the couple if they're married. $30,000 is approximately $1,700 per month. So if you think about that right now, take a look at your household. Let's say that. Uh, you know, take a look at whatever you're earning on a monthly basis. Let's say that we were to reduce that by $1,700 per month, $1,700, roughly $20,000 per year. What would you have to do without? You know, would you be able to maintain your standard of living? Typically what happens when individuals find themselves in this situation, they're really faced with two different options. Uh, they can maybe go back to work to try and generate additional revenue. Uh, depending on uh, how long they've been out of the workforce, that may or may not be an option. Most people don't want to do that, so what a lot of individuals will do is try and reduce their standard of living. And if you have you know, roughly $20,000 less per year, that might be very difficult to do. You might have to do things like uh, stop vacationing. Uh, you might have to drop out of the, the country club, uh, you know, cut off any hobbies that you might have. A lot of times individuals can't spend as much time with family, especially if they live out of state, if grandkids have... Uh, uh, children or grandkids have, have moved to various parts of the country, they can't go and visit them that often. What some individuals have tried to do when they've lost this amount of money, they went from $1 million down to $600,000, they've looked at it and they said, well, in order to maintain my lifestyle, I need to continue to take the same income out of the account. So instead of taking 5% to generate $50,000, if you only have $600,000, you have to withdraw 8% per year. 
that's really dangerous because if you're taking 8% per year out of your accounts, there's a chance that you might run out of money. So you might not have enough money to maintain your lifestyle up to your full life expectancy. So you're really faced with two different choices. You either have to have a dramatic reduction uh, in your lifestyle or the other option is to uh, just you know, risk it and then of course you're running the risk that at some point the money won't last as long as you need it to. Now if we were to take a look at someone that is adhering to the rule of 100, we can maybe minimize the impact of a market decline. Now let's take a look at the example again, but this time someone was adhering to the rule of 100. So instead of having 100% of their money at risk in the market, they're going to have a 70-30 split. So what that means is that they would have obviously $300,000 would be exposed to risk. And then on the other side, uh, we would have $700,000 in a safer position. And let's, uh, again, obviously, if we're earning 5% and the two different uh, strategies are worth $1 million, 5% obviously would mean $50,000 per income. But once again, what happens if we go through a market decline like we saw several years ago? So over here, we would lose 40%. So now we have $180,000. Over here, if it's in a safe place and the market declines 40%, well, we don't lose anything. Okay, so we maintain our $700,000 because we were adhering to the rule of 100. Now let's take a look at the income once again. Obviously, 180,000 times 5%, this strategy would still generate $9,000 per year of income. Over here, your $700,000 at 5% is going to give us $35,000 per year of income. You add the two together, obviously this will equal $44,000. So we did still have a decline in the amount of income that was generated uh, because we had money that was at risk. But take a look at the example that we had earlier. If we had 100% exposed to risk, the income was actually dropped by $1,700 per month. In this particular example, the income goes down, but instead of such a dramatic reduction, it's about $500 per month difference. Well, you still have to adjust a few things, but that's probably not going to be life-changing. You know, you maybe have to take one or two less trips per year, uh, maybe you have to cut back on eating out, things of that nature, but it's not going to be detrimental to one's retirement. If you wanted to continue to take the $50,000 per year, uh, out of the account, it's a little riskier than what it was before we had the market decline, but again, it's not a dramatic difference, okay? You could probably continue to take the $50,000 out if you wanted to, maybe adjust a few expenses down the road, and then you still don't have to worry about running out of money. Now, when we talk about the rule of 100, nothing says that you have to put this 30% of the nest egg at risk. You could have 100% of it in a safer position if you want to. You don't have to put it at risk. It's just if you're wanting to take some risk to try and get a higher return than what a safe type of an account would generate for you, that's the maximum percentage that you would want to put uh, out exposed to market risk. Uh, now again, whenever we talk about this particular rule, you do not have to hit the percentages exactly. I, I mentioned it, I believe, on a radio show uh, a few months back, and I had a gentleman that sent me an email. He would, it, you could tell by the words he was using in the email, he was in kind of like panic mode a little bit. Uh, he had told me that he was 68 years old. After hearing me talk about the rule of 100, he looked at his portfolio and he said only 65% of it was in a safer position. He said, should he panic? And of course, no, you don't have to panic. You just want to be within five or 10 percentage points of this particular rule. Now, uh, let's take a look at some different options as far as what it means to have money at risk and money that would be safe. Okay, so to wrap things up, individuals might be a little bit confused about what the difference is between having money at risk and money that's safe. So obviously, if we were to try and categorize what types of investments that you might find in these two different areas, anything that's uh, risk associated means that you have the potential for loss or you could lose money in, in one way or another. So obviously, that means individual stocks and individual bonds, certainly corporate bonds. Now, some some bonds might be considered safe, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but any type of corporate bonds, uh, obviously mutual funds would be considered at risk. And that's, again, this is something that we talk about in the office all the time. Individuals sometimes will say, well, Matt, you know, I feel like I've got part of my money in a safer position because I've got a diversified mutual fund portfolio. Well, we saw the last time that the market went through a major correction. It didn't matter how many different mutual funds you had. You could have had eight or 15 or 
you know, 16 different funds, chances are they all went down in value. So just because we have a diversified fund or mutual fund portfolio does not mean that your money is safe. When things go down, all of them go down. So this obviously would be considered risky. Uh, obviously you have variable annuities, which is just a form of mutual funds. Those would be considered at risk. Uh, you have real estate investment trusts. This is another area where individuals have been investing a lot of money, you know, real estate, if it's some sort of an income producing property, uh, might generate some sort of dividends. But as we've seen in the past, real estate can certainly go down in value. So you'd have to put real estate investment trust on the risk side of the uh, scenario. Uh, you also have commodities. There's been a lot of commercials and a lot of talk about uh, gold and silver, uh, various types of commodities. Well, that money is still at risk. Uh, it might be safer than owning individual dollars or U.S. currency, but gold and silver, they, those prices are very volatile. Right now, if you'd bought gold at its peak, you've lost about 15%. It's down about 15% in value, so certainly not safe. We would still have to put that into the risk category. Now, the, the things that we can use to have 70% of our money in this example, 70% of our money safe, is going to look like some of these different things. Uh, we could use CDs. Obviously, we're not recommending CDs a lot right now because they're not paying very much interest, but they are certainly safe. Uh, you can have different types of government bonds. So U.S. Treasuries, again, not, not a whole lot of yield on them, but there's very, very little risk that we would actually lose money with them. Uh, you might have uh, different annuities. So in our office, we talk a lot about indexed annuities where we can participate in the upswings of the market from time to time, but uh, uh, we don't ever have to worry about losing anything, but they're not the only option. You have indexed annuities as well as fixed annuities that you could have that would be considered safe. Now, sometimes you can take uh, different strategies and you can have some things that would be considered risky. If you put things like a stop loss on them and protect them from losing principal, uh, they might be able to consider, be considered safe. But for the purposes of today's show, I want you to really just take a look at these types of things. Obviously, another area, you know, CDs, you could also have money in an insured money market account. Okay, so there's a variety of different things that we could classify as safe money. Obviously, the, the things that we have over here on the right-hand side of the board, you still want to make sure that you're getting at least a reasonable rate of return, at, at least a, an interest rate high enough to keep up with and outpace inflation. A few of these things that are on here will, will help you do that. Uh, a couple of other things right now just isn't the right time. But anything that we have that's tied to the market where we could lose principal or lose value, that's what your risk side of this scenario should be in. Uh, and then anything that's protected where we don't have to worry about losing principal, that's what we consider safe. So again, going back to the example that we've gone through here this morning, you know, if you have too much risk in your portfolio and the market drops 30, 40, or 50 percent, that's going to have a dramatic impact on how much income that you can generate. So you're faced with the decisions of maybe reducing your standard of living or your lifestyle. Uh, maybe you have to go back to work to bring in more revenue. I had a gentleman one time tell me, he said, well, Matt, if I found myself in this situation where my income had come down dramatically, he said, at that point, I'm just going to throw in the towel and I'm going to move in with my kids. All right, I don't think there's very many people that are going to like that particular option, but you do have to take a look at what you would do. You can prevent yourself from having to make those difficult decisions, though, if you would just adhere to the rule of 100. So anybody that has questions on this or if you need help trying to determine how much risk you have in your portfolio or if you look at it and you find that you're kind of upside down on the amount of risk versus how much money you have that's in a safer position, please call the office. This is an area that we can help you. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's Smart Money Television. Enjoy an evening with best-selling author and TV talk show host Matt Dickin as he hosts his nationally recognized financial seminar in Kentuckiana. Discover what millions of safety-conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets. Can you find growth and security in today's volatile markets? Can you safeguard your hard-earned assets from the IRS? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and limited seating, we recommend that you call now. Operators are standing by 24-7, 502-653-6080. That's 502-653-6080, or go to askmattdickin.com. You're watching Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. It's Smart Money Television. Well, that's it for this week's show. I want to bring you one last tidbit. You know, the ratings are out, and everybody here at Strategic Wealth wants to thank you for making us one of the most watched shows on Sunday mornings. We really do appreciate it. 
And don't forget that retirement planning is a journey, not a destination. We'll see you here next time. I was born and raised right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, started in the industry in 1997. Uh, and I started Strategic Wealth Designers, my firm, which is an independent firm, back in 2002. You know, from a very young age, I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. I, I really was interested in being in a career where I could really help people. Uh, and then I kind of had a knack for money. It just kind of became a, a natural progression that I would help individuals with their investments and their retirement planning uh, goals and dreams. So it's just something that I always knew that I wanted to do. Well, I love what I do. I don't, I don't consider it work. Uh, every day I get to help somebody new, typically. I love helping people and solving problems, and I get to do that basically on a daily basis. I, I kind of view what we do for a living, or what I do for a living, is one of the most important jobs somebody can have. And it's a lot of fun helping somebody that, you know, is maybe four or five years from retirement and taking them all the way through until they're officially retired and enjoying it and, you know, doing the traveling and, and doing the hobbies and passions that they had always helped to pursue. That's the most rewarding thing that we get to do over the course of the year. Uh, we're going to continue to help as many people as we can in the community. We've, we've built our dream home here. The business is located here. Our friends are here. Our family is here. Our clients are here. We don't ever see ourselves leaving. And I really enjoy what I do for a living. Um, at this point, you know, we're not necessarily working because we have to. I got started at a really early age. I've been fortunate. Um, I, I wouldn't have to do all the things that I do, but I, I want to continue to do the things that we do, like the radio show, the TV show, and the educational classes, because we want to help as many people as we can have a secure, successful retirement, and I'm going to do it for as many years as I can moving forward. Enjoy an evening with best-selling author and TV talk show host Matt Dickin as he hosts his nationally recognized financial seminar in Kentuckiana. Discover what millions of safety-conscious Americans are doing now to protect and preserve their assets. Can you find growth and security in today's volatile markets? Can you safeguard your hard-earned assets from the IRS? Due to overwhelming demand for these events and limited seating, we recommend that you call now. Operators are standing by 24-7, 502-653-6080. That's 502-653-6080 or go to askmattdickin.com.